Hello, my wonderful students out there. It's good having you around. Today is another beautiful day, and we thank God for the gift of life. Thank you. We're also meeting again after, some, after a few weeks. Okay. The last time we discussed, um, talked about in our clothes. So this is just a continuation of that topic. You know, we have, like I, I told you earlier, that we have um, three types of clauses. We have the noun clause. We have the noun clause. We have the adjectival clause. And we also have the adverbial clause. So the last topic on noun clause, we were able to talk about, define what a noun clause is. We also talked about the grammatical functions of a noun clause, which consists of, we talked about the subject of the verb. We also talked about subject complement. We talked about object of the verb. Object complement, object of a preposition, and in opposition to a noun phrase or a noun. And I'm glad many of you were able to, you know, go through that lesson and submitted your assignments. I, I was also able to mark them. And those of you that didn't uh, perform very well, I was able to explain some things and send back the corrections. So today we are going to talk about, we are going to talk about adverbial and adjectival clause, and we are starting with adverbial clause. Now, what is an adverbial clause? An adverbial clause is a group of words with a finite verb. Remember, I emphasized on the importance of finite verb in clauses because that is the major thing that differentiates a clause from a phrase. So every clause must have a finite verb. It's very, very important. Else, it's not a clause. So we say an adverbial clause is a group of words with a finite verb. Is a group of words with a finite verb. Where? Okay. Thank you. With a finite verb, okay, which performs the same grammatical functions grammatical functions okay, as verbs, sorry, as adverbs adverbs and adverbial phrase. And what is this grammatical function we are talking about? Okay. The grammatical function is to modify The verb in the main clause. So the basic grammatical function of an adverbial clause is to modify the verb we have. Sorry, to modify the verb, okay. That we have there, to modify the verb we have in the main clause. Please, there's something I want you to understand here. Sometimes when we give out an expression consisting you know, we have two, majorly we have two types of clauses. We have the main clause and we have the subordinate clause. So when we have give out an expression containing the main clause and the subordinate clause, remember the subordinate clause is where these three are coming from. We have the noun clause, the adverbial clause, and adjectival clause. They're all coming from the subordinate clause. So when we have an expression that consists of the main clause and the subordinate clause, you don't identify the verb you have in the subordinate clause because usually the subordinate clause will be underlined. So you don't identify the verb we have in the subordinate clause. Rather, you identify the verb we have in the main clause. And that is the verb or verb group when we have more than verb that the adverbial clause should be modifying. Now we have, now when we talk about adverbial clause, remember when, uh, when we talk about verbs, when we talk about adverbs, we have different kinds of adverbs. We have adverb of time, adverb of manner, adverb of place, adverb of condition, concession, contrast, Adverb of uh, results, papers, and the rest of them. So in this uh, in adverbial clause also, we have 
it also gives us the different types of adverbials that we have. So we have adverbial clause can be telling us of time, can be telling us of place, can be telling us of condition, can be telling us of um, concession, of manner, and the rest of them. So the different types of adverbs that we have, we can also identify in adverbial clause. Now we are going to look at some of the examples. We are going to look at some of the examples of them. Um, so yeah, adverbials of uh, examples of adverbial clause. Okay, the first one we have is George did the work as he liked. George did the work as he like. Now, if you look at this expression, you identify that we have two clauses there. We have the main clause and we have the subordinate clause. Now, which one is the main clause? George did the work. George did the work is the main clause. Remember, a main clause is a type of clause that, you know, converts a complete thought. A main clause converts a complete thought. So when you say George did the work, you can see it's complete. It's a complete sentence. We can divide it into subjects and predicate. It's, it has subject, verb, and um, the object. We have judge as the subject, did as the verb, then the work as the object of the sentence. Now we have, so we can say judge did the work is the main clause. Then we have as he liked as a subordinate clause. For example, when I say as he liked, it does not convey a complete thought. So we cannot say it's a main clause. So we now have as he liked as our subordinate clause. Now let's look at the grammatical name. As he liked. Okay. So because we are discussing adverbial clause, we should know that whatever we're saying now, um, all the things we're saying now, we are uh, all talking about adverbial clause. So we have adverbial Clause. Now, if we want to explain further, we can say um, adverbial clause of manner. It tells us how judge did the work. How the judge did the work as he liked. That's adverbial clause of manner. Now, remember, I always tell you, my lovely students, that anytime you're asked to identify grammatical names in examination, especially when it has to do with Adverbial clause. You can simply say adverbial clause. Then the types, if you are not sure of the type of adverbials we have there, don't bother writing it so that it don't, you know, it don't, um, doesn't, so that it doesn't affect your score. Because if we have adverbial clause of manner and you end up writing adverbial clause of time, you know that something is wrong somewhere and it could affect your score. So you can simply supply adverbial clause. Except a situation where you are very sure of the type you can then include, include it. But once you write adverbial clause, even in external examinations, you will get your score. So we have adverbial clause of manner. And then the GF, we say it modifies the verb. Now remember we have two verbs in this, sen in this sentence. We have did and we have liked. So like I said earlier, you don't, it, it, it does not modify the verb you have in a subordinate clause. So any verb you have among the underlined words, don't include it. Rather, you look for the verb you have in a main clause. So what, what is our main clause? Judge did the work. So which verb do we have in a main clause? Did. So we now say that it modifies the verb did. Now, another important aspect. Whenever you're writing your answer, when you're writing the grammatical function, when you write, it modifies the verb. There should be a comma there. Then after the comma, you have did, which should be on a quote. Please, if it's not like this, even in external examinations like WAEG, you'll be scored zero. So make sure your answer is like this. It modifies the verb, comma. Then when you write the, um, when you write the verb, then it should be on quotes. Okay. 
Then another example we have is so the scare because it was too small for the family. Example two. He sold his care because it is too small for the family. He sold his care because it is too small for the family. Okay, now let's try and identify the subordinate clause we have there. He sold his car, main clause. Because it is too small for the family. Subordinate clothes. So we underline the subordinate clothes. Now this adverbial clause is asking the question why? Why did he sell his car? Because it is too small for the family. Now we have our GN, as usual, is adverbial clause. Now, what kind of adverbial clause are we talking about here? Of reason. Okay, and the GF, it modifies the verb sold. It modifies the verb sold. Okay. Let's look at another example too. Another example, the third example. Example three. Okay. Wherever you go, I will follow you. Wherever you go, wherever you go, I will follow you. Okay. What is our main clause? I will follow you. What is our subordinate clause? Wherever you go. Okay. Now, GN, adverbial clause of place, because it asks the question where. Adverbial clause of place, wherever you go, I will follow you. Then GN, it modifies the verb. Okay, now another important aspect. You know, in the main clause, we have two verbs there. Will and follow. Will is a helping verb, while follow is a lexical or main verb. Will is a helping or auxiliary verb, while follow is a main verb or Lexical verb, yes. Okay. Now, it's so we, where we have two, two verbs in the main clause. What do we do? There are some students normally do. They will, they will take one of the verbs and leave the other. And it's wrong because both of them are verbs. And we need to include both of them. So what do we do? We say it modifies the verb group because we now have more than a verb. So it modifies the verb group. Will follow. Okay, because both verbs are very important in the structural structural constraints of the sentence. So we say we follow. You don't leave will and take follow or leave follow or take follow and leave will because both of them are important. If you remove will in the sentence, we have I follow you and you see you can see some the sentence is affected. So we have that. Okay. We will take the, okay, the, another example is, um, sorry, example four. I shall go, I shall go if he invites me. I shall go if he invites me. Okay, what is our main clause there? I shall go. Subordinate clause, if he invites me. So that's our adverbial. Now we have GN, adverbial clause, GF. Here we also have two verbs in the main clause. And like I said, we don't take one and leave the other. So we have it modifies the verb group.
sha go okay so i hope the aspect of adverbial clause is quite clear like i said an adverbial clause is a group of words with a finite verb that performs the same grammatical functions as adverbs and adverbial phrase which is to modify the verb or verb group we have in the main clause so in other words an adverbial phrase or adverbial clause rather does the work of an, an adverb so you see the examples given to you so far they are grammatical the gn that's grammatical names and grammatical functions so we quickly move down to adve, adjectival clause adjectival clause as one of the types of subordinate so clause, clause that we have Okay, so we have adjectival clause. I don't know how many of you that uh, still remember um, the meaning of adjectival clause. So we said an adjectival clause is also known as is also known as a relative. Sorry, relative clause. Okay, an ad adjectival clause is also known as what a relative clause. That's number one another name for it, then it is it's also, it does the work of an adjective. It does the work of an adjective. Okay. Number three, it performs the same grammatical functions. GF, okay. That's grammatical function as adjective. Um, Adjectives and adjectival, and adjectival phrase. So it does the same. And what is this grammatical function we are talking about? It qualifies, qualifies the nouns, pronouns, pronouns, okay, noun phrases. It qualifies the nouns, pronouns, noun phrase, sorry, or noun clothes in the main clothes. That's in the main clothes. That's in the sentence. Okay. So we can also say that an adjective clause gives more information about the noun or pronouns, or noun phrase, or noun clause that precedes it in the sentence. Sometimes, in such sentences, some textbooks will refer such, such, um, the nouns or pronouns that, that adjectival clause qualifies as antecedents, you know, because the, the, the clause, the adjectival clause will always come after a noun, or a pronoun, or a noun phrase, or a noun clause in a sentence. So we should know that an adjective clause is also known as relative clause. It does the work of an adjective. It performs the same grammatical functions as adjectives and adjectival phrase. I said GF is grammatical function. Then it qualifies the nouns, pronouns, noun phrase, or noun clause we have in the main clause. We can also say that it gives additional information about the noun pronouns, noun phrase, or noun clause we have in the main clause. So these are the major things we should know about an adjectival clause. Okay. It qualifies. Okay, it's there. Now we have some examples that will help us to identify adjectival clauses anytime we see them in sentences. Okay. So we have some examples there. This is the place where Christians worship. Okay, what is our main clause? This is the place. Subordinate clause where Christians worship. Also note, importantly, that an adjectival clause is usually introduced by, that's pro probably that's why it's known as adjectival, sorry, relative clause. It's also re um, introduced 
by some relative uh, pronouns like who, which, whose, that, how, and the rest of them. So we have our GN as um, adjectival clause. Okay. And then GF, it qualifies the noun that precedes it and which is please. Qualifies the noun, please. Okay. Number two, I have given the project. Okay, let me say, I've given, I have given the money to somebody who is responsible in the class. I have given the money to somebody who is responsible in the class. So what is our main clause? I have given the money to somebody. That's our main clause. I have given the money to somebody. The subordinate clause, who is responsible in the class. So we have GN, adjectival clause. Then GF, it qualifies. What does it qualify? Sorry, what does it qualify? Qualify, okay. It qualifies the pronoun somebody. Okay. We also have another example. The cake that I bought yesterday has gone bad. The cake that I bought yesterday has gone bad. The cake that I bought yesterday has gone bad. What should we underline there? What should you underline there? The cake that I bought yesterday has gone bad. What do you think we should underline there? Okay. That I bought yesterday. That's our subordinate clause. That I bought yesterday is our subordinate clause. So we underline that I bought yesterday. Then the grammatical function, it qualifies a noun cake. It qualifies a noun cake. So you can see that it's very, very easy to, you know, handle questions. From adjectival clause. Just know the necessary things you're supposed to know. That an adjectival clause is also known as a relative clause. You know, it performs this, the function, the role of an adjective. In other words, it's descriptive in nature. It performs the same grammatical functions as nouns. Sorry, it performs the same grammatical functions as adjectives and adjectival phrase, which is to qualify the noun, the pronoun, the noun phrase, or even the noun clause you have in the sentence or in the main clause is very, very important. We also say that an adjectival clause gives more information about its antecedents. You know, the nouns and pronouns that is qualified. It gives us more information about them. For example, I've given the money to somebody. You know, the sentence is enough. It's meaningful. But when you now say to someone who is responsible in class, you have given us additional information about the nature or the kind of person you have given that money to. Okay. Remember I said that um, adjectival clauses are usually introduced by relative pronouns. Like you have who, where, which, whose, whom, okay, and even um, um, some, some textbooks we call them compound relative uh, pronouns. Like you have whenever, wherever, whoever, and the rest of them. So that is all about, okay, finally before we go for the assignments, we also say that sometimes an adjectival clause intercepts the main clause. I will give you an example on that. Sometimes a relative clause intercepts the main clause. For example, animals that are rare, should be preserved. Animals that are rare should be preserved. Now we have that are rare as our subordinate clause or adjectival clause. Now when we say animals that are rare and animals should be preserved. 
Now, what do I mean by it intercepts the main clause? If you look at the subordinate clause, the adjectival clause, it came in between a word in the main clause and the remaining part of it. For example, we have animal should be preserved. That is what it's saying. Now, when we now add animals that are rare, you can see it has kind of, let me use it, use a simple explanation. It has demarcated the words we have in the main clause. In other words, an adjective clause can be placed in the middle of the main clause. It still does not affect the meaning. It can come at the end, end, uh, end part. It can come at the beginning. It can come even come in the middle. So that when you see, like, you don't get confused. All you need to do is that what? Look for the pronoun or the noun or any word that has a nominal role or function before it. Sorry, after it. And then identify it as the noun or pronoun that it qualifies. It's as simple as that. So I will quickly give you the assignments. Okay. The first assignment says the speaker who was accompanying by his wife left early. Okay, left and so okay, I didn't give you the instruction. State the grammatical name and functions of the underlined clauses. I think that should, that's enough. Okay. Okay, the speaker who was accompanied by his wife left early. Number two, the bicycle which my uncle gave me gave me it was a birthday gift. A birthday present. Three, I learned a lot, I learned a lot of, a lo I learned a lot, a lot of Hausa, while I was in Kano. Which my uncle gave me. Okay. Number four. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. So we underline where and just fair to trade finally we have provided you will foot the bill you will foot the bill okay i am ready to go with you So we underline the subordinate clause, provided you will foot the bill. Okay. So that is that. The first one says the speaker who was accompanied by his wife left early. That's the first one. You can see the group of words that are underlined. Two, the bicycle which my uncle gave me. 
was a birthday present. Three, I learned a lot of Hausa while I was in Kanu. Okay, four, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. And finally, we have, provided you will foot the bill, I am ready to go with you. Remember, we discussed both adverbial and adjectival clause. So the, 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 the group, um, the assignment you have there, you identify the, the AGN could be adjectival clause or adverbial clause. So, and then um, the, the, um, the, what do you call it? the grammatical function also should indicate whether it's, um, modifying or qualifying. So that's the end of our lesson for today. And uh, I'm still, this is Helen Okreke, your English teacher. I wish you all the best in life and make sure you stay safe. God bless you.